the right. A, a good discussion is an ideal mix of all the four. The right person, the right topic, the right time, and the right faith. The right topic is the goal of human existence and the path of attaining it. And I feel he's the right person because his name spells out clearly what it is. Mr. Micah Joseph. Mika in Hebrew means who is like God. And Joseph in Hebrew is spelled as Yosef is Yosef. he will add. Certainly he will add and certainly he is like God. And the right time because Mr. Mika comes after celebrating the eight day festival Hanukkah, which just ended 6th of December. Faith. Why I say the right faith? Because the greatest goal of human existence is Genesis. And the right path of attaining is till Malachi. The 34 plus 5 textbooks gives us the right path to life. And that is what we are about to listen to Mr. Micah. Mr. Mika comes here with a philosophy. It is better to light a candle than to curse darkness. Wow, that's a real one. Mr. Mika is a management and accounting professional, hospital management, hotel management, both together, where it starts and where it ends, and the new project ventures. He is retired as a director of admin in Nanavati Hospital, the most famous hospital in Bombay. Found a member of the Zonal Transplant Coordination Center, his humane side and contribution to humanity. Found a president of, of course, he's coming from Mumbai, so he, cricket is in his being. This is, he is the founder president of the Girna Inter Hospital Cricket Tournament, and he is 12 years as chairman of AGCA. And he is a visiting faculty in the University of Mumbai and many other management schools on hospital administration. Deeply interested in metaphysical and mystical subjects. No wonder he looks one like that. That's Mr. Mika Joseph, who is like God, and he will add. Mr. Mika, over to you. Thank you very much, Kunya, and namaste to all the participants. Always like to use the Indian greeting because we are so proud and so lucky to be in India. Uh, I have to share this just a sec. So as I said, this is the symbol that Judaism uses. You will see it in all holy places. You'll see it at synagogues. You'll see it on the Israeli flag. The significance of this, I will explain. Just as the Christians have the cross, we have this, okay? Hmm? Now, this is the topic on which I've been asked to speak. And I want to say, currently our calendar says that we are in the year 5782. And we, for us, we follow the Old Testament, and for us, the story of the creation has great meaning and it guides us in our life. Now, I will not talk too much on the creation. I'll just go through it fast about how God created the, the world in six days. On the first day, he created light. Then he made the sky and he called it heaven. On the third day, at his command, the waters of the earth the seas, the ocean, the lakes, and the rivers were formed. And there was vegetation. Sorry. On the fourth day, God made the sun, the moon, and the stars. On the fifth day, God filled the seas with fishes and other water animals. On the sixth day, God created all the other animals, small and large. Now, God placed all the creatures on the earth and the powers of nature in the control of human beings. On the seventh day, everything was created and put into shape and God rested on that day. This day of rest, the seventh day, has a lot of significance to the Jews, which I will explain. We call it the Shabbat or in English it is called the Sabbath. Now I will start... Uh, one minute. I'm getting... <laughs> Can you all see the slide? Yes, yes. Because... Yes, yes. 
No, I can't read it because the participants' photographs are coming. Can you help me there, Gilby? I don't know. Okay. Uh, okay. Now I'm starting with the book of Genesis. Chapter 1, verse 26. And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let him have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Now, I'm quoting this verse first because this was decided by God before man was created. And because of our superior intelligence, God has placed all things in our care. God has commanded us to live in peace with all living creatures and to walk softly in their presence, which means we have to show love and kindness to all creatures on earth. The Jews have taken this command very seriously. I will discuss this further when we talk on the laws of the environment and how Israel has used these laws to convert a desert into a fertile land. Now, the next slide is Genesis 2. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the earth and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. But before that, the slide said, and God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, God created them. Now this is going to be basically the basis of my talk about creation of man in the image of God and how the soul or the uh, divine spirit came into the human form. Now, as I said, this symbolizes our religion, just as, you know, the cross symbolizes Judaism, wherever you, I mean, Christianity, wherever we go. And I want to explain the significance of this. What is this six-pointed star or star of David? What you will see is it is actually two triangles, one with the point up, one with a point down. And they are superimposed on one another to get this triangle. Uh, Leo, one second. Leo, can you show me why I can't uh, see myself? One second, huh, everybody. I, no, I, I put it, I think, on full. Anyway. So, the significance of the triangles, as I said, one symbolizes the uh, mundane world, the other symbolizes the spiritual world, and they are superimposed on one another, which means we have to balance the spiritual world and the mundane world. That is what our religion is basically all about. Now, this symbol used to have the secret names of God on it. But that seems to have been lost. We are not aware of, you know, there are a lot of things which have been lost. But there is no doubt that this has great protective uh, powers. And therefore, we have given it the name of Magin David, Magin David, or the Shield of David, or as most people call it, the Star of David. Unfortunately, in mysticism seem to have been lost. Now, this is the material triangle. Basically, you know, you heard what I read, that God created man male and female. So on the left-hand side, it's a male aspect, right-hand side is the female aspect, and when both are joined, you get man. Because no man or woman can claim to be 100% male or 100% female. 
it's the same thing in the physical world where you have an atom, you have a uh, proton and you have a neutron or in electricity, you have the positive current and the uh, negative current to give electricity. So this is the material, uh, this represents the material world. Then we have the spiritual world. The spiritual world basically is the spirit energy on top, on the left hand side, the spiritual, I mean, uh, spirit energy and joined together, the soul is created. Now, when both of these are joined, you have the star of David or the triangle. Now, you will see one thing that I'll go back a little, that in this triangle, both the triangles are of equal size. And therefore, as I said, we give importance to the physical body as much as we give importance to the soul. The physical body is like the trustee for the soul. And therefore, we are called upon to take great care of our physical body as well. So we are not allowed to put tattoos on our body. We are not even allowed to pierce our ears. That's the importance we give to the physical body because it's housing the soul. Again, this tells us that the whole goal of human existence is the balancing of the two worlds. You can see they are equal. So we have to balance the physical side and we have to balance the spiritual side. And that is really the goal of Judaism. Now, we believe that everything we do is here on earth. Again, we do not shun our duties on earth. We don't believe that in going in ashrams and staying there and you know, staying away from the physical earth. No, we achieve unity here on earth and we work out our karma here on earth. Now, how, how do we achieve this balance? How do we achieve this balance between the physical and the spiritual world? Now you can see that this religion, which we are talking of has two aspects, as I said, because of the two triangles. On one is the mystical side and the other is the physical side, which is governed by man-made laws, which are basically interpretations by holy people. And the mystical side is controlled by the subjective mind and the physical side is controlled by the objective mind. Now, how do we balance these two? What is the purpose of life? I said it's a balance between the two worlds. Now, Jewish concept of God also, I will talk to, I will just say briefly before I come to the purpose. No Jew describes his God. We say we cannot describe God because we are finite and God is infinite. And I think you will all agree with me that over a period of time, our concept of God changes. When we are young, you know, we, are, we think that, okay, God is like a king sitting on a throne in heaven and keeping watch over us. And slowly we go on changing our concepts of God. Therefore, no Jew talks of what, he, what God, uh, no Jew can describe God. So, therefore, I'll not talk very much on that aspect, but I've spoken what is the purpose of life. The purpose of life is to balance these two worlds. And how, do, how does Judaism help us do it? Through prayer. One of the things which we use is prayer. Then through spiritual and physical laws, and I'll elaborate on the Ten Commandments, and dietary laws. Many people say, why do you have dietary laws? Why you have kosher? I will give the reason behind it while briefly telling what it is. Now, when we talk of prayer, what exactly do we mean by prayer? I think there is no religious practice so generally accepted and yet so little understood as prayer. And in order to know what prayer is, I would like to describe, I mean, I would like to define what I mean by prayer. Prayer, according to a prayer, 
is an act of attunement or communication with God or the divine. Through this act, we draw strength and we draw inspiration. That is the real definition of prayer. Now, based on that definition, you will find that there are different types of prayer. And I've shown it here in this slide. There's adoration, there's petition, and there's attunement. Attunement is through concentration, meditation, and com contemplation. Now, adoration is praise to God. But when we pray in whatever language we pray, we have to realize that prayer, more than the language, is the language of the soul. And therefore, it should be, it should come from the heart and not from the intellect. Clear? Can you show me what it is? It is important that it contents be emotional and not intellectual. So when we say prayers, we have to, you know, like when a prayers of adoration, which is written by someone else, we have to try and recreate the emotion of the person who wrote that prayer. Petition, actually a Jew is not supposed to ask for anything. You know, we say the Lord is my shepherd. Anyway, but we are frail human beings. We are also weak. So, but petition is also a part of prayer. And then we come to attunement. Attunement is through three forms. One is concentration. One is meditation. And the third is contemplation. To explain what I mean, I would ask every one of you, all the participants, to just close your eyes for a minute and try and keep your mind calm or see what all thoughts come into your mind. Let's take a minute on that. I'm not getting it. Okay, I'll stop you all. I think most of you all must have seen that the various thoughts which come into your mind and how difficult it is to control the mind. And this attunement which we are talking of, of concentration, meditation, and contemplation is basically how to control or tame the mind. And I will speak on the briefly on the Kabbalah, but the Kabbalistic system in the in Judaism, helps people in this attunement. It's not simple, it's not easy, but yes, there are techniques which are taught which will help you to achieve this. So basically spiritual growth is inner un unfoldment and the inevitable results of sincere efforts to apply cosmic and principle, cosmic laws and principles to the affairs of daily life. Now, therefore, religion is a way of life. It's a man's relationship with God. It's a man's relationship between God and man and God and man and other men. So it's a lot of emphasis in Judaism is placed on relationships. The Code of Living talks about prayer, dietary laws. I will elaborate on this later on. Then family life. I will again talk more about this when we talk about the Ten Commandments. Then the moral laws, honoring parents, how important it is in, in Judaism. Charity. There are eight different grades of charity in Judaism. The laws of slander, revenge, deceit, and kindness to animals. Let's go to the Ten Commandments, which will also cover all this. The first commandment is, I am the Lord your God. Second, you shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol. Three, you shall not take the name of God in vain. And four, Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. 
honor your father and mother you shall not murder you shall not commit adultery you shall not steal you shall not bear false witness and you shall not covet your neighbor's wife or a house or anything which is your neighbor now if you look at the 10 commandments the first four actually pertain to our man's relationship with god and the next six from honor their father and mother pertain to man's relationship with man so as i said we give a lot of in, uh, emphasis to how we deal with one another because you cannot you know say you love god if you don't love your fellow men one of the basic tenets of judaism is love the neighbor as thyself which is also you know in christianity most of these religions have this that you have to love your fellow men now i am the lord of god we believe in monotheism you should have no other gods before me now in those days they only thought that if you made a graven emeritical leader they make a god out of it money money is a god for most people so again you that is a your contravening this uh, commandment you shall not take the name of the lord thy god in vain the name of god is very holy so you are not supposed to take his name but i just want uh, so we address god in different ways you know we say your oh, god of my heart or we say you know the holy one but the real name of god there are very few people who know it it has been passed down you know you have a written tradition you have an oral tradition and in the time of the temple of solomon in the holy of holies the high priest of the uh, jew community used to enter that place and once a year on yom kippur which is the day of atonement and the holiest day in the jewish calendar the name of god was taken now to take that name of god he had to go through a long process of purification and lustration because to take the name of god and be impure it could be fatal so he for months and weeks he he followed a certain uh, pr procedure to purify himself because he he could take the name of god and since the time that the temple has been destroyed this has not happened and we are all hoping that one day the temple will be recreated rebuilt and this will happen remember the sabbath day keep it holy now we saw that god created the earth and everything in six days and he rested on the seventh day and he told us we should rest on the seventh day because the seventh day is holy most of the abrahamic religions have a sabbath day i think the muslims probably have it on friday the christians have it on sunday and we jews have it on saturday now what is the significance of this as i said we are body and we are soul on the seventh day we rest we don't rest doing nothing we are supposed to concentrate we are supposed to concentrate on our inner self we are supposed to concentrate on the soul we are supposed to concentrate on the divinity within us we are supposed to review the past week actually we are supposed to review the day every evening but on saturday every jew sits and reviews the past week see where he has gone wrong see if he has harmed anyone ask for forgiveness and try to see try to make the divinity with him him come out so the sensitivity of the body to the soul increases this is the real purpose of the sabbath and you will see that when i speak about the environment even as far as the earth is concerned the jews are observe a sabbath for the earth on every in every seventh year 
honor their father and mother. We believe that if you don't respect your father and mother, you don't honor them, you don't love them, you can't ask God to love you. Secondly, I know of people who refuse to work, Jewish people who refuse to work on a Shabbat, and so they could not get jobs. And this poor fellow could not get a job. He had a problem because he was also married. And finally, when he couldn't get a job, which allowed him to rest on Saturday, his rabbi told him, listen, you work, you need to survive. But the most important commandment is honor thy father and mother. So when you honor your father and mother, automatically you will love your brothers and sisters and you will love all your relatives. So that is how this leads. You shall not murder. Yes, God has given us life. We have no right to take it away. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. This is one of the things which is uh, predominant today, where people uh, spread false stories. We give fake news. They sp spread uh, tales about you know someone which is not true, and most people don't ask. And we call this Lashon Hara, where you tell wrong, you bear false witness against your neighbors by spreading all sorts of tales against him. And we believe that the consequences or the karma out of breaking this commandment is very severe. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or house or anything which is your neighbor. Now, the emphasis I want to put is on the word covet. Covet is the mind. Covet is an inner yearning, yearning. So we are told that we have to learn to control our thoughts. We have to learn to control ourselves so that we do not think negative. So pure thoughts will lead to good deeds and good actions. That is why this emphasis on the word covet, which we should bear in mind and uh, there are other religions also which say good thoughts, good deeds, good words. So if you control your mind, and the whole religion points to that when they say we are trying to be sensitive to the divinity within. Now, we have holy books. These are the, the first is the Tanakh, then we have the Mishnah, Gemara, Talmud, and the Kabbalah is not a book, but it's a system. Now, the Bible referred to by Christians as two sections, the Old Testament and the New Testament. The Jews believe only in the Old Testament, which is called the Tanakh. Then the Torah refers to the first five books of the Old Testament, which are said to have been written by Moses. And I want to say that not one word in this has been changed down the centuries, not one word. So you will have commentaries, you will have opinions, but that Torah, the word, the whole Torah remains the same. And we have an oral tradition of explaining the scriptures which have been passed down normally from father to son. That still exists, although slowly, slowly more things are coming into writing. Now, <coughs> I'm showing you a picture of the Torah and you will see that there are no gaps between the words. There are no vowels in the words. So it is, you need a special training to read this. This is just to uh, show you what a Torah looks like. And there are very few people who can really read it and are trained to read it. Now, Jewish laws, the religious, legal, social laws, Jewish laws cover every aspect of life, whether it's festival days, or married life, or civil and criminal laws, agriculture, religious and ritual purity. And Jewish laws are one for all. Kings, the rich men, poor men, there are no class distinctions. Now, many people talk about the Jewish law which says eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. But really, this is a law of compensation, which is it is not to be taken literally because that is also practiced by courts. Then, no one is supposed to be arrested at night. 
illegal to hold pro proceedings after sundown right to property personal laws labor laws rights of women so these are the just i am passing through it because we have limited time and then we have the festivals or holy days i have explained about the shabbat a sabbath the passover basically is celebrated in commemoration of the exodus from egypt when uh, moses led the jews out of the land of egypt towards the promised land so its freedom is not only physical freedom it also gave us a religion because moses is the one who really gave us the religion so it is a spiritual rebirth as well then rosh hashana is a new year and yom kippur is the holiest day it's it's a day of atonement and that is one day in which we every jew you know he just even if the rest of the year he doesn't claim to be a jew that is one day in the year when everyone claims to be a jew now rosh hashana your new year and yom kippur they follow one after the other but rosh hashana new year is not really a time for celebration these are all days for introspection reflection we look upon the past year we see how we have, where we have gone wrong how we can make amends we look towards the future yom kippur same thing but yom kippur is one day on which we fast and really uh, seriously look at all this and yom kippur is a day of atonement means we ask for forgiveness and one of the most important dictates is that you cannot ask god for forgiveness unless you first make good the harm you have done or you ask forgiveness from your fellow human beings because how can you expect god to forgive you if you can't forgive your fellow human beings so that is why yom kippur is known as the shabbat of shabbats uh then we spoke about kosher or dietary laws why do we have dietary laws when we are studying for exams or you know you, you must have noticed that we don't eat very much or if you have a very heavy meal you feel like going to sleep or you have very spicy food you don't feel too well so the food that we eat also affects our moods it affects us so the jewish dietary laws are designed in such a way that it makes the physical body sensitive to the soul that is the real purpose of kosher laws or dietary laws now dietary laws are also very specific and elaborate on the slaughtering of animals which animals are permitted which animals are not permitted so kosher means proper or accepted only certain types of animals birds or seafood can be consumed only mammals with completely cloven hooves and those who ruminate chew their cud can be eaten pork rabbit meat are not kosher fish with fins and scales can be eaten shellfish are taboo all birds of prey are strictly forbidden now we know god said thou shall not kill but we know that when we are slaughtering animals we are killing so we try to minimize the karma on account of this by slaughtering the animal in a different way remember we know we are still taking life so that is a karma which mankind will have to bear and today a lot of people in israel are turning vegetarian but in those days there where was the green land in israel so they were forced to so the animals of bird need to be slaughtered according to the laws of kashrut it strives to minimize the pain experienced by the animals before dying an extremely sharp knife is used to slit the animal's throat severing the carotid arteries now according to religious sources this cut once it is made the animal is insensible to pain and is and prompt its reaction is taken the blood is drained in according to the biblical injunction to not benefit from the blood of an animal likewise 
blood may not be drunk because it is not right for man to do so. Now, if this process is properly followed, then only we can eat the animals. Remember, animals skinned by hunters cannot be eaten. And I've given to you the uh, elaborate uh, rules in a nutshell. So the real purpose in dietary laws is to make the physical body sensitive to the soul. Now, we spoke about the Kabbalah. What is the Kabbalah? The Kabbalah is the mystical tradition of the Jews. For several years, I don't know, centuries, it only had an oral tradition. It was passed on by word of mouth to those who they were worthy. Then someone came and wrote a book on the Sefer Yetzira, or the book of creation, and the Zohar, or the book of splendor. So what is the Kabbalah? I will take you to the next slide. This is a symbol of the tree of life on which every, almost everything in the Kabbalah is based. So what is this tree of life? The tree of life is an image of creation. It is an objective diagram of principles at work in the entire universe. The tree of life illustrates the descent of human beings into the world and only returning upward once more. It contains the entirety of cosmic laws and their interactions. Now, if you see this, there are these are all called uh, sephira, sephirot, sephirot, and sephira is the plural. These are all actually in the body of man. And many people would, could draw a parallel between this and the chakras, which you know the Hindus talk of. So you normally meditate on these sephirot, and the parts which you show is how you meditate and go from one place to the other. And they say that the entirety of human knowledge, past and present, is covered in this. I don't think I'm worthy enough to elaborate too much on this. But I thought I should tell you about this because this is a very important part of our tradition and it is slowly being opened to everybody in the world. We don't feel that this knowledge only belongs to us. But I have to tell you one thing, that the Jews believe that we are born into a religion for a particular reason. And therefore, we do not believe in conversion. We say our religion is the best for us, yours is the best for you. Each soul personality selects the uh, religion which is best suited for its spiritual growth. And God is one. Maybe, you know, we call God by different names, different religions call people by different names, but God is one. And therefore, we say you stick to your religion, we stick to ours, and we respect everyone. So conversion is basically, uh, I mean, uh, frowned upon in our religion. Not that it doesn't take part, but uh, now I will stop sharing. I want to speak very briefly on uh, the environment because many of the earlier speakers had spoken on environment and the Jews, Jews have a lot to do in this environment. That is why you will see, as I said earlier, Israel has been able to convert a desert into a fertile land. And uh, we have a lot to learn from this country, which is just now 70 years old, or 75 years old. So today, there is much being spoken on climate change. For thousands of years, Jewish teachings point to the need to stop exploitation of natural resources for short-term gain. Jewish law calls for the respective care of natural resources and forbids phantom destruction of them. Special Jewish laws protect trees. Even in times of war, it was forbidden to destroy trees. Even in olden times, the Jewish armies were not allowed to destroy trees. And even today, we celebrate a Jewish festival known as Tu Bishwat, 
what is two bishwa it is the new year of trees but why do we place such importance on trees according to one of the holy books the midrash trees are representative of the natural world and god's work trees transform the earth from a barren and lifeless land into an environment capable of supporting other forms of life including animals and humans trees produce oxygen fruit and shelter and are an imperative source of life for man and therefore trees are worthy of our protection from damage and destruction the earth is a living planet just as the torah calls upon jews to work for 6 days and rest on the 7th similarly it calls upon us to till the land for 6 years and let it rest on the 7th as it is said in exodus chapter 23 verse 10 and 11 for 6 years you are to sow your land and gather its produce but in the 7th year you are to let it go and let it be that the needy of your people may eat and what remains the wild life of the field shall eat this is known as smita in hebrew then the commandment of bal tishkit do not waste or destroy is central to jewish environment ethics environmental ethics so when we say do not waste or destroy even if we take more food when we are having a buffet we are committing this sin of bal tishkar the state of israel has done much in the field of nature conservation water conservation drip irrigation use of solar energy etc while much of the world is facing deforestation israeli farmers have made the desert bloom i feel that in these times of climate change thinkers and activists addressing global environmental problems and economic stability will see the wisdom in adapting these old jewish laws for all mankind now uh, i would like to say that you know we have no temple that's why we refer it as synagogues and we consider jerusalem to be the spiritual capital of our, of our, the jews we are hoping for a day when the temple will be rebuilt personally according to me the temple exists in the cosmic we would like to rebuild a physical form and it need not be in the same place in need not be in the but these are my personal views that it exists in the cosmic there can be no doubt and you know when i spoke of prayer and all there are different types of prayers there are also prayers which are mantric in nature where sometimes music is used to enhance the feeling or enhance the emotion and i am going to play a slight a little clip of music to show how the jews are still praying for the temple to be rebuilt uh but i would if this is in hebrew and uh, hebrew is an ancient language less like latin and and sanskrit so i would like everyone when listening to this if possible to keep their eyes closed and when you listen to music or to prayer we don't just listen with our ears we should listen with every pore in our human body so i'd advise everyone to please do that avi hari yes yes yeah yeah sound is coming Yeah. 
Well, I hope that was worth the wait that we went through in order to listen to this. But this is how we keep our hopes and aspirations alive. And what we do is no different from what other religions can also do. And I don't know how many of you have been to Jerusalem. I don't know whether Punya Kumar has also been to Jerusalem. But you really feel the presence of God there. And I'm not talking as a Jew. I have friends who have been there who are Christians and are Muslims who also feel a holiness in that land in spite of the violence down the centuries. And then we will realize today why the Jews want a piece of that land, why the Arabs want a piece of the land, and why probably the Christians also want to be a piece of it. Because you sense the presence of God there. And this musical piece will show you, if you listen, how we keep our dreams and aspirations alive. Now, I would like to summarize, because uh, we are running out of time, what I've spoken on the path to uh, attain it and the path, the goal of uh, human existence. So basically, I'm summarizing by saying that one of the things which Judaism professes is religious tolerance. We don't accept conversion. Because we say, no, my religion is the best for me, yours is the best for you. And most important, we do not consider our religion to be the religion for the entire world. Our religion is the best for us, yours is the best for you. So therefore, we don't go aggressively propagating it. Yeah. Secondly is the mystical part of it, which I explained, which is like a razor's edge. And it shows how we can achieve spiritual development. And all of us really, whatever religion we're following, are going to the mountaintop. It's just that we are going by different routes. So we follow what is taught to us by our religion in the Kabbalah. And I'm sure now the Kabbalah is something like maybe what the Hindus would call the Raj Yoga. Or the Christians would say, you know, how when Jesus spoke of the... Uh, uh, inner church or the kingdom of he heaven being within us. This is what the Kabbalah actually leads us all to. So we are all growing spiritually and we'll realize that we are all part, once we do, we are all part of one universal soul. And then so we should realize we are all one, all mankind is one and we should learn to live in peace and harmony. This is very well brought out also in the Ten Commandments. Those of you who know about the Ten Commandments. When Moses led the Jews out of Egypt towards the Promised Land, after they left Egypt, the Pharaoh had a change of heart. And he decided to go and chase the Jews and bring them back. And when they came to the Red Sea, Moses parted the waters. And the Jews walked through. And the Egyptians were following. And after the Jews had passed, the Egyptians were still following. And Moses asked the waters to come back. And the Egyptians were yeah. killed. Yeah. They were drowned and they were killed. And the Jews wanted to dance and sing hallelujah and, you know, celebrate. And Moses told them, no. The angels of heaven forbid you from celebrating the death of the Egyptians because the Egyptians are also children of God. I, I think and this is what we speak every time we celebrate Passover to show that all human beings are made in, his, in God's image. Then taking care of the environment. Israel has practiced it. Israel had converted a desert into a fertile land. And Israel is sharing this knowledge. They are showing how to stop wastage and how to advance and use technology in agriculture, etc., solar energy, and heading to fulfilling the biblical prophecy that we are a light, that we shall be a light into the world. Now, most people think that we Jews are the chosen people. Now, what do you mean by chosen people? We are not favorites of God. We are just decided to follow in God's ways. And therefore, 
we have said that we will share what we have and by our actions and deeds we shall be a light unto the world now uh, i don't know if there's time but you know these interfaith talks i think uh, father uh, peter is there these interfaith talks are there to create peace and understanding in this world bring harmony bring all of us closer to spread love and father peter if you have no objection you know meditation is one of the techniques or one of the prayers that we talk about if you say so we can do a meditation of 2 minutes to heal the world is it okay father peter okay 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 so the best way of meditation is normally to be relaxed close your eyes keep your feet on the ground slightly apart put your hands on your lap and take three deep breaths now in your mind's eye see our planet earth remember what christ said and it is also said in our temples when two or three are gathered in my name there will i be so we have a design presence guiding us now so see the earth covered in brilliant white light this is a light spiritual light of love and positive thoughts see this light going into the earth covering the the air see the light into the seas into the oceans see this light healing the world the earth see the earth becoming more fertile rejuvenating see this light blessing all animals and all creatures of the earth all the birds all the fish of the sea and see this light enveloping mankind man and woman especially those who are suffering in hospitals or in war zones women who are being women and men who are being exploited see all of them covered with this brilliant white spiritual light and then see the whole planet earth in this entirety slowly open your eyes and let us hope and pray that other like minded people like us today attending this interfaith talks will bring about greater understanding between all religions and all people on earth will bring peace on earth and let there be war no more thank you father peter would you like me to say the last closing prayer say the prayer okay and then we will continue after it or you want to okay. wait till the end and say the prayer okay now the prayer i'm going to say is the benediction which is given by our rabbis our priest are called rabbis after every service so i'd like to say that prayer ye va rekha adonai ve yesh me rekha 
यही राजा नाय पाना लेखा वे खुश में का ईसा आदो नाय पाना लेखा वे यासीम लेखा शालोम मे द लॉर्ड ब्लेस यू एंड कीप यू मे द लॉर्ड लेट इस काउंटर एंड साइन अपॉन यू एंड बी ग्रेशियस अंटू यू मे द लॉर्ड फेस बी लिफ्टेड टू यू एंड ग्रांट यू पीस Amen. I want to thank Mr. Bika and Mr. Kumar for having guided us through this evening session. I wish to thank all our Jesuit dialogue centers across the country for being so open to networking with Snehasudan Institute for the Study of Religion and Saint Vincent College of Commerce, Pune, so as to enrich all our sessions. I hope this networking will continue.